This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits. It's a new year, there's a new version of Unity out, and I wanted to get a little more in depth about one of the bigger features that we'll be seeing more of from Unity in the coming year, Entity Component System, or ECS. About six months ago, I did a video about the rationale behind ECS and why I wasn't doing a tutorial for it at the time. I'm still not doing a hands-on tutorial quite yet. This will be more of a think piece, but an important one. I want to talk about how exactly ECS differs from the traditional Unity game object workflow, why it's important, and when you might use it or not. Shifting to ECS means developers will need to change the way they think about their game structure, and that sort of change is easier when you understand the new paradigm. When I first heard about ECS, my initial reaction was, doesn't Unity already use an entity component system architecture? The answer is, it depends on how narrowly you want to define ECS. In its broadest sense, ECS is a way of organizing data, typically used in games and simulations. The general concept is that you have a space, a world, or otherwise, that you want to populate with things. By the nature of existing in the same space, these things may have some features in common, but may also be unique in other ways. The object-oriented solution to this might be to have one base class, thing, from which any type of thing will inherit. Over time, you'll get a large inheritance tree of unique things. However, the limitation of inheritance is that any given class can only inherit directly from one parent. So, a dog has fur because it inherits from mammal, and a duck can lay eggs because it inherits from bird, but what about a platypus that has fur and lays eggs? It needs to do both. You could introduce interfaces or find other workarounds, but a better solution might be to build a more flexible system from the ground up. This is where Entity Component System comes in. With ECS, you start with a base thing, on which everything else in your world will be based. This is the core of each entity. But instead of a chain of inheritance, each level adding new features will instead add components to the entity. Each component represents some feature. Some of these may be very common across entities, like position or rotation. Others will be more specialized, like rendering, physics, or laying eggs. By mixing and matching components, you can create unique entities with the same collection of parts. Based on this definition, Unity currently uses Entity Component System architecture. Each game object is an entity, and the mono behavior classes that you write get attached to those game objects literally as components. However, that's using a very broad definition of ECS, and Unity has made some modifications which make this system more convenient, but less optimal. The fact is, Entity Component System doesn't mean a system of entities and components. Rather, each word is its own facet, entity, component, and system. And this is where Unity's game object workflow diverges. Unity's mono-behavior components are still object-oriented classes, and as a result, they carry both the data and functionality of their respective class. This is a legitimate approach to design, but from an ECS perspective, it means that the system has been folded into the components, rather than standing on its own. From a memory standpoint, this means that each time you create a component, that class instance gets stored somewhere in heap memory, and one game object with many components may have those class instances spread across the heap. In addition, Unity's core components are often built for flexibility and maximal use, but this means that they may hold data and functionality that a particular entity doesn't need. For instance, a cannonball fired in your scene doesn't need the ability to rotate, but it's already built into the transform component. This all creates overhead in terms of both access and storage that can slow down your game, especially if you have high numbers of game objects in a scene. The solution is a more purist ECS approach. A common line seen about ECS is that it is a more data-driven development process, and this is true. However, it is also more systems-driven, as indicated by its name. In a true ECS architecture, the entity itself is just a container for components tagged with a unique ID hash. In addition, components are strictly for holding data. They have no functionality coded into them inherently. Instead, that functionality is extracted from the component and housed in one or more central systems, which can operate on each relevant component. The systems iterate through any object with the required component and performs its functionality, stored in the system, based on the data accessed from the component. As a result, each component becomes much smaller. For instance, the data needed to move an object is simply the position, direction, and speed, which is much smaller than having the entire transform attached. What's more, the entity is effectively an associative array of its components, so they can all be stored together in memory. 
Admittedly, I am not 100% familiar with how this storage works, but the consensus is that it is much more efficient for both storage and access. This does require a bit of mental gymnastics. One nice thing about the object-oriented approach is that data and functionality is grouped together within a relevant class. This is very easy to think about. With ECS, on the other hand, the systems are working in an abstract space. Any entity could be passed in as long as it has the appropriate component, so you have to think in more generic terms. I'd argue that this is a more advanced solution for more seasoned developers, and that ECS isn't always the right way to go for a project. However, there are some situations where ECS will be a huge benefit. The most obvious use case for ECS is games with a large number of entities, such as strategy games. Unity has demoed this capability pretty regularly. Secondly, Unity is building ECS to tie in nicely with its job system, taking advantage of multi-threading and using multiple processor cores. So if this is technology you know that your game will need, ECS will come in handy. The next use case is a bit more abstract, but a lot of ECS bear similar advantages to the flyweight design pattern, where objects with a lot of commonality often share a single core object, aside from the few things, if any, that will make them different. Again, strategy games come to mind here, along with large-scale simulations. I don't have a specific proof of concept here, but I have a sense that these two tactics would work well together. Lastly, I think one of the biggest benefactors of ECS will be virtual reality. Frame rates are the main limiting factor in how VR experiences can expand, and a lot of that rests on the GPU, but for more complex experiences, you don't want your CPU to be holding frames back either, and the efficiency of ECS will be a huge boon to the medium. ECS is still an add-on to Unity at this time, and not fully integrated into the workflow, so I'm not going to dive fully into it for a tutorial series yet. But with that said, it certainly has its advantages, and as the workflow evolves, I'll be sure to cover it here in the coming months. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you next time.